Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today we're talking about heat. And as I said, I'm gonna to try to show you any commercial beers I'm drinking. This one's Wander, not Wander, Wanderland by Sierra Nevada. It's a nectarine ale. And to me, it smells like a pale ale that they've added some nectarine to. Very smooth, very nice. You smell the nectarine, you smell some other hop aromas, and then on top of that, you get a nice flavor. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. It's greatly appreciated more than you realize. Definitely appreciate that. So a lot of people who've been home brewing for a while understand how to heat their wort. And I mean for fermentation, not heat their wort as in boiling. But you just wanna maintain your temperatures. One of the big problems we have right now is we're at the end of December, getting ready to have New Year's here tomorrow, or New Year's Eve tomorrow. And Florida's cold. I mean, we're hitting 37 degrees Fahrenheit at night. And my fermenter is probably sitting at 40 degrees with no assistance. 45 later in the day because it doesn't change temperature quickly. So my thing I want to discuss is that if you're living up north and you have a basement, which, oh my God, I wish I had a basement. I do. I really do. My understanding is that a lot of people don't heat their basements or don't heat them regularly. So if it's freezing outside, that basement could easily be 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius for our Celsius fans out there. But it's something you need to be aware of. And I know your wife or girlfriend or whatever is like, oh, I don't want this in the living room, put it downstairs. So you're like, oh my God, and you got blankets around it, but you don't know how to keep it warm. We're gonna go across a lot of different ways to keep things warm. The majority you've probably heard of. There might be a few in there you probably haven't. I'm hoping there's a lot in there you haven't or you just had forgotten about like I did. So, and I even heard a new one recently, which I kind of liked, but it's just a kind of a remake of an old way of doing something with new technology. So. Also keep in mind that when you first get your fermentation going and it's kicking off, your yeast is producing heat and it can easily kick up 10 degrees Fahrenheit above what your ambient temperatures are right outside of the bottle or whatever your fermenter is, whether it's plastic, glass, stainless steel, it doesn't matter. It could be considerably warmer inside or five degrees Celsius as high as that in difference for our Celsius fans out there. I didn't want to leave them out. So I'm gonna go over those. One thing, flat out, right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you, ink burn. Get an ink burn. Um, there's an STC 1000, I have that on my main fermenter outside. I wired the whole thing myself, I set everything up myself. Had I known what I know now, which I have on my keyser, I would've just bought an ink burn. This one's a spare I got on a special deal, and I keep a hold of it. It's got a crazy huge temperature probe. Don't understand why it's that big, but it is. And it says cold and heat. So what you do is you set the temperature to where you want it to be, and then you set what they call range, two, three, four degrees, whatever. And each time it gets you know, past or below, whatever it may be that you're looking for, it'll kick on the heat or the cold based on what you've got. And yes, you can use heat and cold. I use it in my fermenter. And I'll give you a quick example of what my fermenter looks like. If I can, I'll post some photos, otherwise maybe a little bit of the video. This is the fermenter. Never use the fermenter with full heat on. But I have a 42 wide by 42 inch long, 37 and a half inch high box. Giant wooden box, two by fours plywood, but it's a box. And I built it where I could open and close the top knowing that heat fall or heat rises and cool air falls and it's more designed to keep things cool. So that way it kind of keeps the cool air in. It has a dorm fridge with freezer. And then I had this, which is just a 200 to 250 watt little space heater. And I'll explain why you don't want something more powerful. And that's sitting on a piece of tile, just so it doesn't cause an issue with the two inch insulation, which I don't know how well that would tolerate direct heat. It died recently. So I ordered this hideous purple one. No offense to people who love purple. No one will ever see it. It was the cheapest one and the one I could get the quickest. So it's purple. And I had this one for three years. So that's why I ordered the same brand because I don't expect these heaters to last more than two years and still actually produce any kind of heat. So for three years, I figured I got a good run on it. I'd get another one. So without any further delay, oh, sorry, a little further delay. If you don't have a tilt or something like a tilt, you may want to consider it. It gives you the temperature of your wart. So, and if you can get a temperature probe, 
with your ink bird that you can stick in there and seal it up. Awesome. Knowing the temperature of, wort, of your wort and controlling the fermentation temperature is huge. I've seen articles where people said, you know, if I had to start home brewing again from the beginning, where would I spend my money? And most of them said maintaining their temperature and controlling their temperature for fermentation because it's huge. You get a big spike and the temperature rages on, your yeast is probably gonna survive, fermentation's gonna finish, everything's gonna look good. You're gonna have a good chance of having an off flavor or something you really weren't looking for in that beer flavor that you just didn't really want. So you wanna keep your fermentations under control. Um, there are theories out there that for four or five days, whatever, you're fine once you're in there and then you can kind of accelerate, do whatever you need to do. But I haven't actually proven that or tried it and I haven't checked if Brutalosophy has, so you may need to check that out. Let's kick this off and go into different ways of heating your wort during fermentation. So, number one, make sure your temperature probe or your thermometer is calibrated before we get into any kind of heat. Yes, I'm stepping you back a little. When you take your thermometer, whatever it be, you know, if it's one of these tape-ons, you're not doing it. But 50% ice, 50% water, or a little more ice, it doesn't matter. You stick your thermometer in there, and if you're hitting 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, you should be good. If you're way off, so I have one over here that would be 10 degrees off Fahrenheit and freezing water, there's a problem. So definitely calibrate it. So number one for the heating system, or number two total, we'll call it number one, a heat pad. They make heating pads now that are just like the ones you use for your body to keep your, you know, like you got a sore leg or your back or your butt or whatever it may be. Most people put it on their backs for a lot of issues. They run about 12 to 25 watts and you put them on the bottom, the new ones, the ones that are actually designed for that, all that heavy weight to be sitting on top. You put it on the bottom, you plug it into your ink bird on the heat side and you monitor your temperature. If you can't get it to work, Try to tape it on, I mean, literally put tape all the way over it so that way it's really insulated with that glass so that you can get as much heat transfer or cool transfer as possible so you know what the real temperature might be. And set it. So you can set it and forget it and it'll help maintain it by turning the heat on as you need it. So yes, a heating pad. And if you don't want to buy a fancy one, you can go with a regular home heating pad. Just be very careful because they can break a little easier if you're dropping that big old carboy down on there. Number two for heating an actual heating blanket. Yes, one of those blankets you put on you, you plug it in, you're like, oh, yeah. You just wrap your carboy in it. Just wrap it in there, you're all good. And even with the heat pad, you should probably put a towel around it to help the temperature fluctuation, minim kind of minimize that temperature fluctuation. And as I said, some of these items may not be as imaginary, so I'll make sure to try to put a picture or something so you can see it. But number three, heat, called a heating brew belt or a heating belt. It is literally a little belt that you put around your carboy and you plug it in and it produces heat. I have never tested one of those. I would like to test those, but I have never tested one of those. And that's something that I am very wondering how it would do versus the next one, which I'll explain. But I'll put a picture up there so you know what it is and I'll link down below. I'll make sure anything I mention, I'll try to link it, whether it's an affiliate link, which throw me a couple pennies, a couple nickels, whatever, or a non-affiliate link, it doesn't matter. I'll make sure they're down there so that you can click on them, check them out. Some of these things are really expensive. Most of them are not that bad though. So a heating belt. A fermentation or fermentation heat wrap, carboy heater or firm wrap. It's usually about this high or width wise and it wraps all the way around and it's clear with like black filaments. And what it's doing oh. is it's running electricity through there to conduct heat and help to warm that actual bottle, carboy, plastic, whatever it may be, by so many watts or a few degrees, just to kind of keep the warmth up. So that's one consideration. Fermentation heat wrap or carboy heater, whatever you want to call it. Number five, space heater. This one's going to be a little bit big, but it's an expanded area. Like I was talking about my little space heater. These are designed to heat an area, a room, a freezer, a fridge, whether it's on or off, if it's on, Hey, the ink bird. You can control cold and hot. So you can have your fridge on cooling, your little ambient heater on hot or heat. Same thing like I mentioned my fermenter. I have my fridge on the cool and I have my little heater system, which sits on a tile so it doesn't damage anything with the two inch, ins two inch insulation, if I can say that correctly. But yeah, it works great. So 
you can do a wood box. You could do, uh, be careful with styrofoam or something else, but you could do basically a box or an insulated box. Um, other one I like, which a lot of people think of the old reptile heater lights. I hate those. Uh, the, just don't do it. You're going to end up with a fire and they're hard to control. And the last thing you want is any kind of light on your work. Just don't do it. They make these cer ceramic heat lamps. They literally look like a, a lamp with a coil on it, but they're flat and they're made of ceramic and they just generate heat. They're designed for reptiles or anything that needs ambient heat. And those work pretty well too, but I definitely do not recommend the heat bulbs. So, and it's one thing you can do. Number six, a sous vide or sous vide, one of these things. Plug it in, you set the temperature and you can plug it into that to control it on and off or you can probably control your temperature right with this and just make sure that you know it seems to fluctuate properly. But the key is, is what you're doing and this one I actually saw recently on the web and told the person I would be sticking this in a video. It's the same theory with number seven, but it's basically a swamp cooler or water bath, however you want to say it. You take your carboy, plastic glass, and you have to put it in a Rubbermaid or something that has a lot of water, and you keep that water at a certain temperature, whether it's cool or hot. So instead of dropping in things of ice, you're just adding heat to it. And like I said, going into number seven, an aquarium heater. So same principle, you stick those in there and you can control it. I wish I could find an aquarium heater that didn't have knobs and stuff. You drop it right in the warp, but I don't need that. But it's just something that would be cool. So sous vide, con control the temperature, and you could probably do it, like I said, right from there. Definitely get a good one, something that you know is going to last. This is a Yeti, and I did have a problem with it on the third time, and they replaced it instantly. I was quite impressed, and I'm all good. But I have several other, other products and other types of kitchen appliances. So number nine, Brew Jacket Immersion Pro. And I haven't tested this, but it's definitely on an uh, option. Right there. You have your temperature control right up here. And you have a rod that helps to either heat or cool the wart as needed. So you can set your temperature, set it, forget it, walk away, you're all good. But something we're gonna be testing in 2021. So rumor is, is you know, they've had some issues, but overall it's been improved drastically. I'm looking forward to trying that one out. And it comes with a really super thick jacket, which is something you want to keep that temperature in. And you're gonna need that with any of these systems, with the exception of the one where you're doing a water bath. That's not gonna work. But you can put a towel around it. Something to just kind of keep the temperature from changing too quickly one way or the other. Number nine, cool brew insulated jacket or any kind of insulation, especially thick foam, uh, whatever you have, multiple towels, I don't care. But what you're doing is you're helping to keep whatever you have in there, whether it's cold or hot. So you still need to provide some sort of heat, but it's a nice way to kind of keep that temperature from changing too quickly one way or the other. Number 10, and this I'm just definitely gonna have to kind of post a little link in a picture, but I've known of this thing before, I'd forgotten about it, and it looks like there's only one company, well, several companies, but there's one company out there that seems to be producing it for a reasonable price versus some of the other ones I'm seeing for 400 to to $1,000, which is insane. But it's called, a, and the one I saw that was reasonable was around 70 bucks. Cool Zone, which is the company, Cooling Jacket, and those are the people who I mentioned that have a reasonable price. The Cooling Jacket is, let's see if I can explain this. It's kind of like a radiator with two tubes. So you still need a pump and you still need some way to provide hot water or cold water, whatever you're trying to do. And it pumps that in and it runs around their little radiator or insulated jacket and goes back out. So you could help manage that, of course, like I said, with an ink bird or something. So you'd still need a pump and it's a little more involved, but it is a cool way of doing it if you don't have a area to keep your stuff fermented. And it's almost kind of like a poor man's glycol system, which we'll mention that a little later, but it is a pretty cool way of doing it. And I said a little later, but number 11, glycol, glycol cooling or heating system. I would love one of these. My problem is, is you're talking 600 bucks for maybe a two prong system, four prong or better. You're talking 800 plus, and that's just beginning price. The part that's expensive, and I know that's a lot of money too, is you have to have, vessels set up with the coils and everything in them and that gets very expensive 
So, you know, you have to have these systems that allow for the stainless steel coils and they do their job. They can run hot or cold and the glycol system can be set up to run, you know, cold, warm, whatever you need, you can set things. But yeah, that's a great system if you can afford it and if you can justify it, because I think there's people out there who can easily afford it that cannot justify it. I can't really afford it or justify it, but it is still very cool. And for us uh, guys out there who like their toys or even the ladies out there who like their toys, that is a cool toy. So things to keep in mind, and that's pretty much it as far as the heating and cooling type systems. And like I said, we're focused on heating because I know it's freezing in a lot of areas, if not almost everywhere throughout the US right now and other countries. I know Australia, what is it, summertime? South America, it's summertime. Yeah, good and bad. You might be trying to find ways to cool things down. But if you can't put a temperature probe in the wart, which would be the best possible, tape it to the side, tape it all the way over because you don't want any other ambient temperatures. You want what's inside that glass, plastic, stainless steel, whatever it may be. You know, if you can submerge it, great. I love my tilts. The tilts can give me a, a verification. Okay, I've got my, you know, fermenter at 70 and the tilt says it's 72 in the wart. Okay, I'm good with that, you know, but if it starts going up, I bring now the fermenter and I know my separation of temperature. So I know it's two degrees separation or three degrees separation or eight or 10 if it's just getting going. And I bring them down and it'll adjust it. So I love those systems. It works really well. Keep in mind too, ambient temperatures, it's gonna fluctuate. If you're in the middle of summertime or early spring, you know, very early fall, saisons, things like that, go for it. If you're just trying to do a vikis or a quakis, however you wanna say it, and you want to crank the heat up all of these will work really well i mean you can crank the heat up but you know be careful you can also kind of go over the temperature recommendations for that type of yeast too so thank you again for joining us here at bitter reality brewing don't forget like subscribe keep sharing i definitely appreciate it it's been great i'll keep updating this as we uh do more brews i need to put in bottle because i did the brew firm dubell and it's in a bottle so, you know, it is what it is Got a lot of things in bottles that used to be in kegs, but not too many of the bottles, just stuff I like to try again later as it ages a little. So thank you again. Here's to a great 2021.